Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talked to a painter who went to school here in Wisconsin and uh, in Madison, actually. And the thing is, is I followed them because they had a show here at one point. And I explained this on the episode, but one of the problems with Instagram for me is I will follow an artist going, oh, I think I want to see if that person might want to come on to the podcast. And then I follow so many people. And then, of course, you know, all the things you see on Instagram, you don't always see everything. And then next thing I know, I have a bunch of artists that I want to talk to, but I can't remember which ones I reached out to. I, you get what I'm saying is I, I, I end up following too many people and then people I want to talk to kind of get lost. And I pretty much talk to anybody who wants to be on the show because I love to find out about them. So when they posted that they had a showing at the Wisconsin Museum of Art, I was like, oh yeah, that person. I wanted to talk to them. So I reached out and said, hey, would you like to be on the show? I'm just explaining the process of how me reaching out to a podcast person works. But really, the person is a fantastic painter, a great artist, and has some really detailed work that they do that's just so impressive. And we talk about how that came about, what the influence was, and actually how studying some unlikely artists and the work they do led to their really precise type of painting style. Anyway, we talk about all that. It's a fun interview. And here it is starting right now. I am Pranav, uh, Pranav Sood. I live in New York. Uh, I grew up in India and I'm a painter. So you're living in New York right now? Yes. Okay. Now... I've followed you for a little while, and I, for some reason, thought you were based in Madison. I've seen you do a lot of things in Madison. You are currently doing something in Madison, or in Wisconsin, at the yes, very least. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I actually graduated from UW-Madison. Okay. Uh, I studied there for three years, from 2017 to 2020, like during pandemic, I graduated. And now I'm having a show, a group show for a Museum of Wisconsin Art. Okay. On their 10th anniversary. Now, explain to me, uh, the your artwork is very unique, and I love it. And it's I, I, that's one of the reasons I followed you. I think that you had, uh, after you graduated, you might have had a gallery showing here a few years back. Because I've been following you for a while. And that's, that's the funny thing and the horrible thing about Instagram is I'll be like, oh, I'll follow a person and I want to talk to them and have them be on the show. And then I end up, you know, following, like, a thousand people and then <laughs> I always can't remember who I wanted to talk to. And then your Wisconsin show popped up or your Wisconsin gallery popped up. And I was like, Oh yeah, I've been meaning to talk to that person. So I reached out to you, but uh, how would you, how would you explain the artwork that you make? What's your, how do you explain it to people? Uh, so my artwork are mostly about like love relationships. Uh, they are like about two people, physical and soul. Uh, it's, it's like two things in life we all experience. And I try to like paint a subject matter where people can just connect with it, but at like try, uh, they can like find something on their own. They can find something which is they, they feel like they also experience it, but at the same time they have a confusion or they are trying to think about like what I am trying to convey mm -hmm. and so I like that time when people are a little confused, but they also are forming their own narrative. So they are my paintings are mostly narrative paintings and they have all sorts of symbols and characters which appear in different paintings. And I use this idea of like, which Disney also uses like Easter eggs. So oh, right. I, I use one character, I paint it, and then it develops over paintings. And you can like reconnect or retrace those characters and find their meanings, like what they were doing in, in the earlier painting. So the, every single painting is like a chapter, uh -huh. which people can read like comics. And they are mostly influenced from my own personal life with what I'm going through. But then I try to summarize the whole uh, experience of mine into a painting, which is very vague, but at the same time, meaningful. Okay. And when did this all start? When did you start doing this? Uh, I was actually uh, doing it in India a little bit. I was trying to at least. And I was learning like Indian miniature paintings back in India. 
um, went to like various workshops and learned from like superb, amazing artists uh, from India. And I tried to like find my own voice and own style. And I was working through my undergrad to find that. And when I moved to US and then I was like, I need to like create something big, vast and colorful. And that's what I was trying to do. But at the same time, because I, I use like 2D format, everything is like very flat. Every color is very flat. So it it gives me an idea. Like it, it just appears to be like, uh, as if like everything is static, everything yeah. is stopped in a moment. And now somebody who is a viewer can look at it and try to form their own narrative. And that makes it suspenseful. Okay. And you, you said you took miniature painting classes. Now, what does, is that a particular, I mean, I know it, it I'm, I'm assuming from the name, it means painting small, but is there a particular like uh, background or uh, culture of miniature paintings? Yeah. Uh, like Indian miniature painting, we call it like uh, we have it in Persian art or even Gothic art was something like that uh, in Christianity. In India, we call it Indian miniature painting because there are like different schools of in India. Schools as in like, like we have school of color in US. There are like small groups of people who started their schools and were trying to like find their own uh, meaning or trying to find their own purpose to do something. So mm -hmm. in India, we have like different schools of art and miniature painting is one of them. And I was learning through like some great teachers who were like professional artists and and doing it from like years and I did like workshops I learned the traditional style but because I was a contemporary artist and I thought how can I use the technique and yeah. the style and the way they use narrative to uh, to project or reflect in the painting how can I use that and push that limit to a contemporary level so okay. that not just it doesn't seem to be Indian it should be universal that everybody feels like oh it feels very colorful joy and happy and I can connect with it okay and as a contemporary artist who were some of the influences that you were having when you first started out uh the first big influence is when I started my style uh was I was working uh I was researching on Van Gogh and I was looking at the paintings in books, of, of, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was trying to like look what he was doing, how he was mixing colors, how he was like mixing colors on the canvas by adding marks and strokes. And I tried to replicate that. And but I didn't. I was like a person when I made like my first painting. I saw this uh, marks of different colors can mm -hmm. have this power that creates a con complementary or contempt, a different, a new third color. Like, for example, like if I add a yellow base and have some orange marks on it and then have like very few blue marks or red marks, the areas define and look very different. And it call, I call it field of color. Like if I change field of color, it will look like, it will appear to be visually a gradual or there would be a gradation in it. So I thought I should explore that. And from there, I started studying Joseph Elbers, who is a famous color theorist and to understand how colors work because as humans, everybody sees colors differently. And for if I see some color as red, for me and for you, the red would be very different experience. Mm -hmm. And so I thought like how I can use that. And I started creating my own color combinations, mixing colors and trying it out on my paintings. And that's how it started. Okay. Like seven years ago. Yeah. And I like the fact that in each thing that you were studying, it was, you were observing it in the way they did it, but still trying to apply it in a different way that you wanted to use it. Cause when you said you learned color mixing from Van Gogh, I'm like, well, Van Gogh, it, it was like slop, 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 you know, yeah. yours is very refined. Yours is very, it's, it, yours almost seems digital. <laughs> if I, if I could say, you know, from looking at it, it looks very digital. It, the digital part came like uh, during pandemic. Okay. Because, uh, during pandemic, I was 
at home, I was working on small paintings and uh, I used a lot of tape. So I was making complicated paintings, but uh, using tape. And that gives me some time to like actually mix so many colors or uh, like create gradations in the painting, like okay. subtle gradations. And, and that's how, because using tape, everything was super precise. That's when it started looking like very digital. Okay. Before that, you can like see patches of colors or like color being like you can see brush marks. But during that time, it was very digital looking. But then now you can see like if you look at look my paintings really closely, you would see thicker colors at some places or patches of brush strokes, uh, which I now feel like I should do that more. So I'm working on that. Okay. Too. Yeah. No. It's it's very. It, it it's it just so controlled and I love that it's uh, seeing even some of your from going from the larger to the smaller ones the different versions uh, things you've done on the walls I've just noticed that control and and uh, just super impressed by it I I, I yeah and, and that's yeah. why I was like is there something he's doing <laughs> well I mean there is obviously because you're making it but I mean something special but uh, like maybe you were using some sort of digital but no you're doing it by hand is what you're saying yeah. Uh... Like especially like um, I s most of my influencers are like are not people or artists who paint like me who paint like flat colors or something like that. Uh -huh. I I enjoy abstract painters or like Van Gogh. You said how can you learn this from Van Gogh? But right. if you study their uh, his paintings, you would see like how he applied like a yellow ochre as a base and applied uh, green on top. But by mixing a little bit you can see like different tones in from yellow ochre to green. And I was studying that, like what kind of green he used and what kind of ochre he used and how he was blending and what was the moment when he stopped blending it, uh, blend it blending it with like patches, of course. Okay. Uh, so I was studying that and that's how I was trying to like find my own palette. And my first rule is I need to paint brighter and brighter with every single painting. So really? Yeah, I want like super bright painting. Super, How come? Super bright painting. I don't know. I, I love colors. I'm from India and India is all about colors. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I love bright colors and I'm just pushing my limit to make yeah. like brighter paintings with every single piece. Okay, I can see that. I mean, I guess I, I was looking back at some of your work and there are some that uh, I guess... I will stop and go looking through your portfolio. It's like, oh, that one's kind of dark. And it looks like it might be some of your earlier work if I, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, like it changes. Like uh, every painting is like very colorful, but if you put two paintings side by side, you yeah. would notice one is like even brighter. It feels like there's a light coming out of it. And that's when I feel like, how can I push it further? And, I try to find different color combination or structure to paint the scene. Okay. And so we've talked about, you, you've explained what some of the meanings behind some of, or at least the purpose behind some of the paintings that you do, the way they connect in the coloring. Now, let's say you're actually sitting down to write a piece or say you're currently, I mean, you probably are currently working on a piece. What's your process for as far as like, okay, today I'm going to sit down and do something. Do, do you wait till inspiration strikes? Do you plan something out? Like what's your process for starting a, a project? Um, so my paintings take a long time to finish. And, I can see that. <laughs> and I use... I uh, I paint one painting at a time. Uh, okay. I hardly paint two paintings together. So if I'm painting one piece and I just sit down on with a piece of paper, like a drawing a drawing sheet and stuff, and sketch like a and start sketching from like center to outward and try to like figure out characters. But once it's done, I start sketching on the canvas and things change because it's the next day everything happens day by day so one right. day sketch and i did sketch i won't sketch it on the canvas i will just let it marinate in my okay. head and i will go for bike rides and i will just keep thinking about the sketch and what where it's like not strong and then i would sketch it on canvas and then i sit back and just drink 
something and like just looking at lo- listening to music and just watching it and trying to fill colors visually in my head and hmm. see like which color would go where and what kind of pattern i want and all that and then i just start painting and i i do like first coat of like colors all over like okay i want blue in this section yellow in this section and if everything works properly then i will just start making flat add gradations and make it create like a tension of push and pull inside the painting by making the foreground super forward or super inward and background being super forward or super back so i'm trying to like create a collage mm-hmm. and i'm just making decisions where should this area should go further or in the front and and everything is like color maps and i just think about like yellow here yellow there yellow there and how it would connect and how would it look visually because i know colors have power and every color in combination creates a visual uh wavelength which just everybody sees and stays connected to and i'm just trying to manipulate that visual uh specialty of the eyes we all humans have and how i can manipulate it that's what i like to do okay and you mean the eyes by the fact that there are actually a lot of things with eyes in the painting you're talking about correct no like uh if somebody's viewing oh, the person it looking as the eye, gotcha. a person looking at it and how, like if they're viewers and how would they see and how what's their primary color to go to like because like i'm a person who looks at red first then green i oh. know like in uh you know like in a rainbow red has the biggest wavelength you would see red from far away than blue okay so if i create a color combination which mixes and creates a tension of colors that if somebody sees it then they can get lost in it or they want to get away from it so where should i create that so that people like the viewers eyes would just keep bouncing inside the painting and they get stuck and feel like attracted towards yeah and there is kind yeah. of a flow and a synergy to the things that go around the page that you have as well. Yes. Yeah. And and, and I, I feel like that kind of adds to the direction as well, or at least me personally looking at it, I shouldn't just say, I feel like that's what it does. That's, that's what I see. And that's kind of what you're saying is like, it, it applies differently to different people, but you're trying to get that flow involved Yes. in what you're doing. Okay. Now there's yeah. something else that is very, I mean, we talked about the gradient that you do. I, I'm still, I'm just amazed by, but on top of that, there's something else you do in the paintings that I'm even far more amazed by. Now your patterns, your pattern work is phenomenal. <laughs> how, do, <laughs> how do you make your patterns? Like it's, it's hypnotic when I look at your work and I see the patterns in it. Uh, when did that start and how did you perfect that? Uh, it started around like 2016. Okay. And I just started like making a stencil and trying to like fill like dots. I was like, first I started making dots, like I, uh, dots on the painting, like everything, the whole painting is small little dots. Mm-hmm. And I thought it, it makes it the whole painting look really flat. And why not change the size of dots? And I started changing the size of the dot and then why not a rectangle? Why not a triangle? Why not this? That's how it started, but uh, it evolved into like super meticulous patterns and yeah, <laughs> uh, and like uh, it's like collages. Like you are picking like different patterns from different places, and you are creating gradations. And every single piece is like a mosaic. So you are like filling in different pieces, like mosaic with tiles. So mm-hmm. to create this whole painting. And it's just patience. Like I, I enjoy sitting down for long hours and just keep painting something because the end result gives me a big satisfaction. So I feel like it's worth it. To yeah. Sit down. And some of the some of the patterns that I've seen, I mean, you'll even put ones inside of larger objects with large patterns, and then behind it will be a very small pattern. And your patterns are also getting patterns inside of them. Like I've seen, I saw a few where it was like. It was like a diamond, but then there was another colored diamond inside of it. And that repeats 
over and over again. I, I mean, I feel, <laughs> it, I know you said it takes you a while to do a painting, but I feel like you're making it even more and <laughs> more and more involved and take even longer every time you make one, which is fantastic, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I usually give myself a deadline. Like, uh, oh, you I do? Have, because I, I'm working on like similar kind of sizes. So if I have like a six by four, which I, I love the size, uh, six feet by four feet, and that takes like I give myself like three to four weeks and I have to finish in oh. four weeks. So I try to give myself like three weeks deadline, one week for buffer, and I have to finish it in four weeks. And every day with different techniques I'm learning, I'm trying to like find out ways to like reduce that time to like two weeks. Um, because I work like 12 hours, more than 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. on okay. And are you working as an artist full time? Uh, I work. Uh, I work like six to twelve in the evening on okay. my paintings, and fr from like twelve to six for somebody as a studio assistant. Gotcha. Okay. And I now, really with the uh, with the artwork, we spoke before that your artwork is currently in the Museum of uh, Wisconsin Art. Yes. Now, now uh, how did how did that happen? How did you? get your work in there. It's, I mean, not that it shouldn't be, but I mean, everyone's always curious about like, how do I get my work shown in a gallery? What was your process and how did you, how were you contacted or did you, did you contact them? Uh, I got invited. Uh, oh, really? Okay, from cool. Them. Uh, they were selecting 10 artists and they were asking and I got an email one day from Museum of Wisconsin at if I would be, at, if I would like to be part of that show and I said, yes, we, and I've made like special works for the show. Like I I'm, I have like four pieces in the show and I made them specially for the show in like okay. the last six months. And yeah, it just, it just happened. Uh, also like uh, the person who coordinates also was part of my MFA program. Oh, nice. Back in university. So okay. he said like, if I'm interested, so he invited me and I said, yes. Nice. <laughs> well, yeah. that, that works out great. And when did you uh, start showing your work publicly uh, as far as getting it out there? When did you finally go, the things that I'm creating, I'm going to start trying to put them out there or sell them online? Like when did you, because a lot of people can paint and create things themselves, but it's the putting the work in front of the world that's really kind of a, a huge hurdle <laughs> for yeah. a lot of people. When did you start doing that? Uh, my first group show was in 2012 when I was in high school. Oh, nice. I was part of this, like, you know, extra classes, like, uh, outside the school. I used to go to this teacher to learn art. And at the end of the year, they had, like, art shows. Uh, so I was part of that. That was my earliest, the first show when I decided I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. And Okay. That's after that, I pursue BFA to start to learn about this whole thing. And were you already planning to go to college for art at that point in time in high school? Yeah, I um, I was pretty good in studies back in uh, before high school. And in high school in India, we have to like select our majors where which study you have to do. Like if you want to be engineer, so study that. I wanted to be an artist, and everybody said it's not gonna be working like it's gonna be really really hard for you yeah you to like be an artist like everybody if you are an artist you will get like a professor job or a, you will become a teacher um i was like that's great but i want to be an artist like i see in newspapers or i see in movies i see like how they are in like big place and doing that so like you know like when parents worry about the children and they feel like what you and in india uh, doing job as a teacher w won't pay you well. So I'm like, and even in, as an artist, it's like even less. So <laughs> right. my family was worried and my teachers were worried, but I said, I want to do it and I will do it. I just want to do this because I like it. So I just went for it. Okay. And yeah. you did this. What would you say was one of the hardest things about trying to pursue this like what what would you say was a difficult part or something you actually just hate about having to succeed as an artist yourself what what are some difficult things that you go through 
I think it's it's the whole process is so much fun if you feel like uh you are watching a movie. It's fun. Yeah. It's like you have a downfall, now you're trying to solve this problem to go upward again. Agree. But when you go downward, you need a lot of patience and believe in yourself <laughs> to like yeah. stay on track and don't lose hope and I feel like that's the worst part because you get like sometimes you get like panic attacks like oh it's not working it's not the painting part because you will figure it out that's what you enjoy but bringing your work out there and asking people to look at it and believing in you to actually represent you in a gallery or like showing it to the collectors so that's the hard part how to like talk and now with time I'm learning how to talk about the art to these two people like collectors or gallery uh directors and everything curators and it took a long time that's the only hard part like how to figure out the best way to present yourself like what's your elevator pitch yeah and uh that's hard and then like what if you succeed if you get something like for example uh you wanted a show and you got the show and what next Right. If nobody comes to you like hey your work is cool i want to show you again if nobody comes then you are producing and producing what next how should i proceed where should i contact and mm-hmm. that's the hard part you have to figure it out and you have to plan your next moves yeah and i mean i guess the only real way to try and do that is to live through it like you said it's the ups and downs and when it's down you have to think about how to how, yeah. how to fix it and move forward, I suppose. Yeah. And also talking to the the curators too. I never thought about that part. Like it's one thing just to talk to people and go, hey, I people that you do run into personally and say, I like your stuff. And you're like, well, thank you very much. But when you're talking to the gallery and curating people, you're right. The elevator pitch. I've never, uh. yeah, <laughs> how, in, in how do you art do that? World, <laughs> in art world, you can go to a curator or a gallery director or art consultant. Mm-hmm. Hey, I make art. And I right. love art <laughs> and I would love to you to sell it. Like they wouldn't respond. They won't listen to you. And you can't show your work on your phone right away. That's rude. And so you have to build a repo. You have to go out for drinks and you have to like find them and then ask them to come to your studio visit. And if they come, talk about it. And if something clicks, they would definitely come. If not, then you can't push it. Mm-hmm. that's the only thing like you can't push your jobs oh yeah you have to just be patient you just have to do your due dil- diligence and just say like that's my work and that's what i do and why i do it and i'm passionate about it and if things click mm-hmm. it will happen okay and so how do you get the word out there how do you promote yourself otherwise aside from when you are showing in galleries like uh in new york i usually go to like art parties or openings where i see people like sh- i feel like showing up there showing your face and talking to them okay. and talking about their art helps people to like stay connected and with time they would come to your studio to look at your work and if there are leads then they would suggest something so just it's it's mostly word of mouth yeah. but then there are uh several big shows like uh there's like one spring break art show in new york which is for like emerging artists and you have to like apply for that so you have to like plan your whole statement you have to have a curator and then have the whole show and then you apply and that's that gives you like a platform to actually show your work out there to totally strangers and meet total strangers and then you begin to uh, like make more friends in mm-hmm. our world. So that's another way. So it's just like trying it out. What's happening? Just say yes and do it. Right. Yeah. And you've also got a, uh, a, a really nice website that you've got run too. And how long have you had that up? Uh, it's, it's been like six, five, six years. Okay. So you've had it for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. It was our uh, class assignment to make a website. Uh, in my UW Madison. Oh, that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. The whole <laughs> class sense. was like, make a website, write right. artist statement, like those kind of tasks. And then you learn about like what, how this happens. And that's when I actually made my first website and that's what is running now. Okay. 
And do you sell your work online at all? Uh, on my website, like uh, I tried it. I had this commerce version of the website, uh, but it's hard. Like people don't buy from a website, uh, like the artwork, but they used like buy prints and stuff. So right. because it was expensive, I just cut down to just like make a website for a portfolio. And if somebody likes it, they would DM me or reach out through email. Yeah. And I, I was actually going to ask, have you ever, and I know this is a thing there's uh, with painters, I was going to ask if you make prints and I've had people don't like the way their prints look from the paintings yeah. and other people who are like, yes, and they do very well with the prints and, and it both answers are valid. So, I mean, and obviously it's through the opinion of the artist. So I was curious, what are your views on prints? Cause you did mention it, but you didn't say that you were doing them. Yeah. Um, I did it one time for, okay. I had a solo show opening. I printed some stuff and I tried to like sell it. It went well. I, I felt like whenever I do merchandise, like prints or stickers or something, which is more than 10 mm -hmm. uh, pieces, people, uh, I just say, I sell like 20% of it. It's just, I just cover my cost. And then I just left with like bundle of prints and I don't sell which I never liked. And then I feel like give away to like people, which is also good. People have yeah. like little art. And if I feel like that's an amazing curator, they should have some peace and they should see my work every day. So that, right. So subconsciously thinking about me. And so, yeah, but then I stopped doing it. I feel like I need a bigger company, a platform where they would help me create like artist level prints. Mm. Uh, and then I would do it. Yeah. Uh, Isn't there a Glisse printing company in New York? I there are say... many. Okay. There are many, but they don't accept art. Like they oh. don't accept artists. They have no like way to like show them. So it's like, it's a word of mouth. I need recommendations to get in there, to talk to the person. And they would say like, oh, I like this specific piece and let's do this as print. And okay. then they will promote the artwork and sell. They have like huge following who would, collectors who would buy but they don't select right away they need like recommendations okay all right i get that that's fine <laughs> yeah. I think in new york i feel like everything works with recommendations you need like you have to say like i know this 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 person mm -hmm. and recommended me to you and then they will start a conversation okay you know this person that's my friend let's talk yeah otherwise nobody would talk like that right away Right. Well, I mean, it's a big place. <laughs> There's it's a lot of people place. there. I can see why that would be the word of mouth is the way to go rather than just people walking in and go do this. Yeah, um, that's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now with the, uh, you said it takes you a while to work on a piece. Um, what are you currently working on? Can you tell us about like the current piece that you're making if you're making one right now? Yeah, I'm working on this 33 feet by four feet. Wow. Painting. Okay. And it's about, it's about romance. It's about love. Uh, it's, it's about like, you know, I am from India and in India, sex and relationship is a taboo. Like you don't talk about it with anyone around okay. you. So it's very personal. And when I moved to US, I started looking at these people like kissing on the street, like every red stop, they're, they're stopping and kissing each other. So for me, it was like, I, I was like, I have seen this in movies, but in real life, that's so open. Like, that's so good, liberating. And why not in India? And so I started painting about the subject matter about my girlfriend from that time. Now I'm married to her. So I started that. And the one I'm painting now is also about like breaking the stereotypes of, uh, of a couple in a, in a romantic position or, or, are like having being sexual in a way and all the characters around them are like being happy or confused or looking away or feeling like this is not it so it's like the whole uh, everybody around them is teasing or doing something reacting to the scene so i wanted like my piece i wanted to like break the stereotype of being indian and what i was doing in india and how the society works and how can I break it by painting about something really personal? Wow. And you made it, you, it 30, 33 
feet, you said? No, t- uh, sorry, three feet by four feet, 30, oh. 30 yeah. <laughs> I th- for some, and maybe you did say that, but for some reason I heard I, 33 I started, feet and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I started saying like in inches, then I thought like I should say it in feet. So 30 <laughs> and then three, yeah, <laughs> maybe that. Okay. <laughs> no, then, then forget the question I was going to ask. I was going to be like, why would you like, make one that no, long? No, I want to do like 30 by, four, 30 by 40 feet. I would love to do that. I have a goal. Okay. And I'm going to make like a big, big mural or a big uh, painting for sure. What is the largest painting you've done? Uh, Six by 12 feet. Six by 12 feet. Okay. And this was on a painting you did or was it on, uh, was it a mural type painting? painting? It was what? It's a triptych. It's a three piece painting. Oh, okay. Connect together to make a big piece because you don't have bigger wall like 12 feet to paint on. So... Yeah, it's in Wisconsin. That painting is in Wisconsin uh, with Able Contemporary Gallery. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I worked with that gallery from like last two years. I had two solo shows with them and I have, they have in, that painting in storage right now. Oh, you're, it's in storage? So I couldn't like go see it today is what you're saying? You can like, see, I... you can like ask them and they would show you. It's uh, their stories is in the gallery itself, so oh okay, I would show you, yeah. But it's in that gallery because I was moving to New York, and I was like, if you find a buyer, just sell it. Otherwise, I'm going, so you keep it for the time being. So right. they have it. Yeah, because that would have been you would have had to travel with it, and you would have had to pack yeah, it. And, yeah. <laughs> do you a, currently have expensive. a studio, or do you work out of your home? I did had a studio when I moved here uh, in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But then I got married and my wife was coming here in the U.S. and I wanted a home. So because she, it was her first time coming to New York, I wanted to spend time with her and also continue my practice. So I found a home with like two bedroom basement mm. and set up my whole art studio there. So nice. I'm working from home right now. Okay. And uh, if uh, are there any uh, projects or current or things that you're going to be working on in the future that you'd like people to know about? Um, I, I'm right now. I, I feel like I'm on a buffer period where I'm okay. trying to like find out what to do because my goals uh, from like last five years were to get a visa, get married, and come here, come stay in New York, make a base connection, and then now I'm like. I did like few shows in New York, like a solo show in New York and all those things and build the connections. Now I'm like, what to do? And that's my buffer period where I'm just focusing on my work and paintings and trying to like find how I can do differently from what I did in the past. So I'm just creating my next solo show. And once it's done, then I will see like what to do, where to look. All right. And if people wanted to check out your work, where would you suggest they go see it? Uh, if they want to stay connected with me, please follow Instagram, uh, Pranav Sood Studios. And I often update my website after finishing a, a solo show or finishing the whole series. But if you want to see what I'm doing currently, Instagram is the best place. Nice. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. It was really great talking with you. Thank you so much. I had, I had a lot of fun. 